Today we have a big update on the Avro Vulcan build, which you can see here in the background. Today I managed to maiden take off twice. Uh, at work uh, we have some chicken sheds and we've got a big concrete apron out the front, um, which my boss gave me special permission to try taking off from, um, as it's really smooth polished concrete. Um, like I said, I did two trial takeoff attempts. The first one went very well. Um, it took uh, about 100 yards to take off and I coasted through the air about a metre, two metres off the floor for about 50 metres before I cut the power and let it glide back down. Um, one thing I did notice, I was very surprised how far it coasted while on the ground. Um, so that is an update I'm going to have to do is some sort of braking system on the uh, wheels. The second flight didn't go as successfully. Um, as you can see, I'll show the video in a second, it did come down with a bit of a crunch. Um, I had a bit more confidence so I used a lot more power to take off um, and she took off very quickly in about 20 metres and instantly started to climb which is fantastic but I overcompensated and pushed down um, bit too aggressively and as you'll see in the video it dived and hit the ground and bounced and then dived again and broke the landing gear. Um, yeah it didn't go <laughs> as I planned but it is a big move forward that it is going to fly really easily. Um, I think the biggest problem with it uh, me overcompensating was it is if you know the Avro Vulcan it's got two elevators uh, on the inside of the wings and on the outside has got ailerons so I have got it on a switch that I can use either just separate elevators or uh, separate elevators and separate ailerons or all four control surfaces in one so they can mix as elevons or whatever I want to do. The problem with that is you have about this much elevator per wing then and they're about that deep and it only took a little bit of movement for it to flick it up and then dive it hard down. Um, yeah I think next time once I get it repaired I will have the mix switched off so it's just the elevators working as I found it didn't need a lot of encouragement getting up. Um, so as you can see it did break the landing gear off but it did break it in quite a nice fashion that it just broke the plastic attachment points uh, on both of them which is I'm happy that it did that because it means it didn't put any stress on the legs which I have been worried about because I extended these legs and they are normally about that length but that wasn't enough for the Vulcan as the tail it, as it, they are about here on the wings and because it's so long when they were so short the tail was hitting the ground very early on so I had to extend them so they're more realistic. Um, unfortunately the nose did break off in the um, bump as it came down but as you can see it was a nice clean break along the glue joint which is again quite good. Um, I did Knowing that the nose was going to, is going to take the brunt of any crash, I wanted it to be a weak point. So the nose, in the event of a crash, the nose can come adrift and it will stop the nose getting damaged or getting pushed into the fuselage, which would cause, could cause issues as the fans aren't very far behind the nose. Um, originally, the batteries were both in line the two four cells, 3200 four cells were both in line in the nose, but we found just under taxiing that the connection point for the nose was not strong enough and they just crack and the nose would drop off. So um, that we did move them back inside here into the fuselage. Um, and at that point we did find out it balanced a lot better 
with them here as we're a bit too nose heavy um, with them right in the nose. Um, as I'm sure if anybody watching has ever built a Delta jet aircraft, they will know that they are notoriously very, very difficult to balance. Um, a conventional aeroplane, you would be about a third to a quarter back off the leading edge of the wing. And because the wing is primarily straight, it's very simple to find the balance point. But because obviously deltas go in a V, it can be anywhere along that um, spar. So it is notoriously difficult to find. Um, so yeah, the next stage, obviously, glue the nose back on, strengthen that back up. Um, I'll be, now I know that it flies pretty good, I'll be finishing off the exhaust tubes. I need a bit of covering and just finishing off. Um, at the minute they're just very thin acetate all the way up to the engines, um, which is very successful at the moment. Um, yeah, and obviously the nose gear took the brunt of the first impact, as you'll see in the video. So I need to sort of strengthen the steering rod. Um, now, the rear landing gear, I'm thinking if I can have some sort of strut that when they are down, it sits up against so that they, it can, it won't be as weak on these bolts. Um, because obviously the Vulcan's gear come down, they fold up into the wing forward, so the front of aircraft's here, they sit like that in the wing, and then they come down and they're slightly swung forward, so when it comes down, these level off. Um, I did build all these myself, because conventionally when you buy them, they're just a single, or twin wheels, as these were, but I obviously wanted to make it as realistic as possible. Um, yeah, onto brakes, you can buy um, remote control jet wheels that have uh, electromagnetic brakes inside the hub. Uh, and I did, I've been doing a bit of research and what it is is a hub with a shaft coming out of it that you, you would uh, put into the oleo strut of the retract and it has magnets inside that you can activate and then they break like a conventional car drum brakes. Um, unfortunately, per pair, you're looking at anywhere between 50 and over 100 pounds, which is very expensive, considering ideally on the Vulcan, I'd obviously have to have eight, which would be able to stack up and it's far too expensive to do it like that. But my other idea is to extend these parts where the wheels attach out further back and front and I'm going to have like conventionally on old horse and cars I'm going to have a brake shoe that goes over the wheels on all of all four and I'll have some sort of servo in the middle that can pull them and they will just clamp gently onto the outside of the wheels and it's going to be a lot more cost effective and simpler way for me to do it for a start because as I say I was not expecting it to carry on coasting as far as it did. I didn't think such a large aircraft was gonna keep going like it did, but it must have taken a good 100 meters for it to slow down, which I, luckily I had the room, but here at home or any other place, I might not be as lucky and it might run off the end of the concrete or the tarmac and that can cause a lot of damage. So the other problem I found with the retracts is that where they are positioned in the wings, um, they are just in front of where I have the spar, which is, it's very, the, the pros of that is that all the force goes onto the spar and the spar is made of plywood. So that doesn't give. The con to that is it is pretty much on the balance point. The rear wheels are on the balance point, which means there is no weight on the nose gear which is okay because the nose gear is quite flimsy, but when taxiing, I was having a lot of trouble trying to keep it straight and stop it tipping back. Um, so I am gonna have to look into that as well, at moving these possibly behind the spar. The only problem with that is, is the spar is gonna get in the way of the leg 
when they fold up because obviously the fold ups are about that angle and I can't cut into the spar because in the bottom of the spars uh, where they join onto the wing is a aluminium tube that goes into the main fuselage that's how they join together so I'm going to have to look around that possibly have the retracts slightly lower and angled back up a bit more so they possibly miss um, just have, means having these out slightly further but um, I'll have to play around with that Okay, I think that brings us to the end of our update video on the Avro Vulcan. Um, make sure you've subscribed, uh, please like the video down below, and see you next time.